and welcome back to Lulu U. This week, we're talking about the dream team. More specifically, your dream team. More, more specifically, your publishing dream team. So as we all know, the saying goes, there's no I in team. There's also no I in books. And I feel like there's a joke in there somewhere, but I was not able to figure it out. If you do, leave it in the comments below. But basically, all I'm saying is that you definitely want to work with a team to create the best version of your book. And that is what we're going to talk about this week on Lulu University. But before we get started, be sure to hit subscribe so we can keep sharing publishing power with the people. All right, so you might be thinking, hey, I'm self-publishing. I am the team. What are you talking about? And that's a great question. And what I'm talking about here are the editors, cover designers, formatters, and beta readers that you might want to work with to create the perfect version of your book. So at Lulu, we've published over a million books. We've seen the good, the bad, and the not so good. And I think it always seems like the most successful books have a great team behind them. So let's talk about what that'll look like for you. So what we're gonna dive into first are the elements of your dream publishing team. So I'm gonna go basic and advanced here, kind of depending on your budget or where you are in the publishing journey, but as always, it's up to you who you wanna work with. Up first, basics. Let's lay the foundation. So if you find yourself working on your book on a shoestring budget, the things I would definitely recommend or the people that you would want to look into hiring are gonna be a editor and a cover designer. So for an editor here, you're probably only gonna to wanna to hire one if you're on a limited budget. So I would recommend doing a copy editor or going with a copy editor. So this person is gonna go through and really work on the grammatical and punctuation and all of that stuff to make sure your manuscript is really perfect. So the next thing, I don't think I need to harp on this, but cover designer. Please, please, please get a cover designer. It does not matter if your book answers all of life's burning questions. It does not matter if you figured out how to only eat junk food and still have a six pack. No one will read that book if you don't have a good cover. You will be the only person with a six pack. I cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough. So please hire a cover designer or your book's never gonna make that level of success that you're looking for. Uh, a great cover is a wonderful marketing tool for any successful book. All right, so up next, we'll go over the advanced element. So if you find yourself working with a bit of a larger budget or you're ready to expand the team, you can go for a developmental editor. So developmental editing is gonna look at the themes and structures working within your text. Um, this can also go over your characters, make sure they're consistent, and that your story is properly paced, among other things. Next up is a copy editor. So I touched on this a little bit, but this is gonna take you back to those days of grammar school when you get your papers back with all the red lines over it. That's copy editing. So again, going over your grammar and making sure that the spelling and punctuation is perfect. Next up are beta readers. So these are people in your key demographic, keyword is key here. So readers of your genre or fans of your genre or of your uh, text that you're working on um, or of the theme that you're working on, these are people in your key audience that are gonna be able to read your manuscript and give you really good feedback on where it is and things you might wanna change. So this can be really helpful with positioning the book and genre consistency. Next up is formatting and layout. So that's making the guts of your book really pretty. <laughs> Cover design, don't make me say it again. You know it, I know it, get a cover designer. Come on. All right, and the next on the list is going to be marketing. So this could actually be on the basic and advanced and I probably should have put it in both. But when I say marketing here, I'm not talking about hiring like a, a PR firm or a marketing team to promote your book. Um, that can be a part of it depending on your budget. But really what I'm referring to here is the promotion that you should be doing anyway. So on social media, whatever channels you're active on, I mean, it's free to send out a post or create a post that says, hey, my book is out, go check it out right now. But also for a very little money, you can get some ads running that may uh, expand and reach more of your targeted audience. Last but not least is your launch team. So this can include anyone from maybe your beta reader group, anybody that you have kind of met on Facebook that's supportive of your book, anyone from authors groups or book clubs that you may be a part of. Those are who you want kind of reviewing, buying, and talking about the book right at launch. So of course, with a caveat here, Family is great, of course we all need the support of our families, but if someone goes to look for your book and all the reviews they see here, the people have the same last name as you or everyone that's reviewing your book is in all of your photos on social media, mm, can look a bit suspect, that can look a little bit strange. So you wanna diversify this group to reach as large an audience as possible. 
So a little quick pro tip here is that as you're building and creating this launch team, make a Facebook group or an email thread with everyone on it so you can communicate expectations and timelines as the process goes along. So now we know the elements of a publishing team, but how do you know what the dream team will look like for you? Well, first things first, what are you working with? You gotta be honest about that. So are you done with your manuscript and now you need an editor? Or are you done with kind of everything? You just need a cover to tie it all together. Are you in the earlier stages and you need those beta readers that I talked about? Regardless of where you are, just be really honest of what you need at this point to get to the finish line and then start kind of building out who you want on that team. After you've identified who you need to help you finish your book, figure out the ideal candidate to fill that role. So do you want someone who's really direct and upfront, is gonna give it to you straight? Or maybe you want someone who's really genteel and delicate and can tell you, hey, chapter three kind of sucks. I mean, this is your baby after all. You have to figure out how you want the information delivered to you. Think about things like communication. Do you want to be able to speak to this person in person? Or do you want all the communication to go through email or phone? These are all things you kind of want to get clear on before you find these candidates. And once you have all this sorted out and all of the things that you definitely know you're looking for kind of written down or somewhere where you can reference, then it's time to move on to the next step, which is finding that person. Now is your opportunity to find the perfect candidate for every role. Don't take this lightly. These people are gonna be with you in this journey through thick and thin for at least a couple months. <laughs> so once you've found the perfect candidate, don't be afraid to ask for samples and specifics of their work. So here are a few pro tips on how to approach this process. First up, so this is really specific to when you're looking for editors, but there are a ton of resources online that you can check out. The one that I would highly recommend is the Editorial Freelancers Association. So go to their website, it is the-efa.org, and this is gonna be a great reference point to give you an idea of pricing so you can know what to expect when that conversation comes up. Next pro tip I've got for you is have your budget and timeline readily available and really clear when you start these conversations or before you start these conversations. So before you go into a meeting or set up a call, you wanna know what is your timeline and how much money do you have to spend? So going to the EFA, especially for editing, can be really helpful to kind of set these guidelines. But regardless of who you're talking to at the end of the day, you need to know what your timeline is and how much you're willing to spend to get this service. Once you've found a few folks that you wanna connect with, Treat it like an interview. So that's what you're doing. You're interviewing this person. You don't have to hire them. You wanna make sure it's a good fit. But before you go into your first conversation or meeting, I would suggest creating a list of questions and must haves that you have on mind that you wanna get through before the end of the call. You don't wanna get it to the end of it. You've had great chemistry. You've been on this call for 30 minutes. You both have a cat named Batman. <laughs> and then you find out, oh my gosh, they're so expensive or they can't even work on my project until 2024. <laughs> you wanna get this out that you open in the beginning. So here are a few questions we recommend asking or having on hand before you go into these calls. Number one, have you worked on projects like this before or are you familiar with my genre? Number two, what timeline can I expect if you take my project on? Number three, what is your preferred method of communication? And number four, how much does this service cost? So these are all things that we think are pretty critical and you wanna get out of the way in the beginning so you can move on to see if it's gonna be a good fit outside of those things, but this list is not exhaustive. So be sure to think about the things that are pertinent to your project and add other questions that you feel are necessary. All right, so you've asked the right questions, you've gotten the right answers, and now you've built the dream team. So now what? Well, don't set it and forget it. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't just build this team and then walk away and come back a couple weeks later and they hand you a bestseller. <laughs> so you're gonna have to be a bit more hands-on than that, which you probably already know, but you're the boss. So for every service that you've contracted or everyone that you're working with, you wanna set up you know, weekly or maybe bi-weekly phone calls or email check-ins to make sure that everyone stays on track and creates the vision that you had from the very beginning. If you're not sure where to start with your dream team, be sure to check out Lulu's amazing partners page. So if you go to lulu.com slash partners, you're gonna find a wonderful curated list of amazing service providers ranging from full service to writing tools to cover design to editing and even educational resources to help you stay on top of your game. Well, that's a little bit about building your publishing dream team. What do we miss? What should we cover next? What joke was I trying to make in the beginning? Leave it in the comments below, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.